So this is um, a clinical trial that we are describing the results for the first time. It's called the Viali A clinical trial, which is a randomized study of azacitidine uh, with or without venetoclax. Um, and, and just as a bit of background into why this um, clinical trial came to be, the, the, the average AML patient is older. You know, the average age is about 68 to 72 years. Um, and the, the majority of our older patients with AML uh, get lower intensity treatment strategies, which are somewhat effective, um, but responses are usually fairly low, like 30 to 40 percent, and the overall survival is on average under a year. And so, so we, we have desperately needed new treatments for our older AML patient population. Um, and we did a phase one study that showed that when you add venetoclax, the BCL2 inhibitor, to azacitidine, we see responses in the 60 to 70 percent range um, with survival extending up beyond a year. And so this is really the confirmatory phase three study to try to kind of show and prove that this combination really is effective um, and, and more effective than, than giving azacitidine alone, which is often the standard. Um, and so this was a, um, it was a large multi-center international phase three clinical trial. 431 patients were randomized and evaluated to either um, azacitidine with venetoclax or azacitidine with a placebo. It was a, a placebo controlled trial. Um, and the primary endpoint was overall survival with key secondary endpoints of, of response and transfusion independence and many other kind of clinically important uh, endpoints for our AML population. Um, the, the average age of the patients that were enrolled was 76, so it really did um, kind of represent a, a trial that was treating old, older patients with AML. About um, a quarter had secondary AML, meaning that it came from um, an antecedent immunologic disorder like MDS or, or was therapy related to uh, a solid tumor perhaps. Average follow-up for this study was, was about 20 months. And so we did have um, uh, a good degree of, of follow-up on these patients. Um, the primary endpoint, as I mentioned, was overall survival. We were trying to see if um, this combination improved responses to azacitidine alone. And what we saw was indeed that, was azacitidine um, led to an average overall survival of about 10 months, which is exactly what we would expect based on our historical expectations. And the combination improved that uh, by uh, up to 14.7 months. So with a hazard ratio of 0.66, meaning like a 34% reduction in the risk of death. So, so really clinically meaningful. Um, when we talk about responses, um, as opposed to a response rate of about 20% with, with azacitidine alone. Um, again, what we would expect, we saw a complete remission rate of about 37%, so increased. And then when you look at the CR rate, um, including CR with incomplete count recovery, that went from like 30% up to 66%, so like doubling of response rates. And that was seen across the board, even people with higher risk um, genomic features, cytogenetics, um, uh, regardless of age. And so, so meaningful improvements in responses, kind of no matter who you were. Um, and the responses were durable too. Um, in terms of safety, um, there, the main safety signal with this combination is cytopenias. And so uh, we expect to see kind of low counts with leukemia patients. That's just how this, this cancer manifests itself. While patients are requiring transfusions a lot. Um, and when their immune system is low, when they're neutropenic, they have a high risk of infections. And so we did see an increased risk of neutropenia and neutropenic um, related fevers with the combination, particularly in the early cycles, uh, which was kind of easily managed with mitigation techniques, um, uh, uh, including kind of holding therapy for a week or two to allow full count recovery, um, giving GCSF if needed, um, uh, kind of delaying dose reducing cycles. And there's, I'll go into that in the, in the talk I give about kind of some of these mitigation strategies to make sure people are tolerating the combination well. Um, the, the combination does lead to improvements in transfusion independence. Um, so, uh, uh, so patients are not um, kind of coming to the hospital or the clinic is often getting transfusions of platelets and blood is often. Um, and the other thing that I didn't mention that's important to say with this combination is, is the responses really happen early. So with azacitidine alone, we're used to seeing patients respond after about four to six cycles. Um, and so we continue them on treatment and um, their counts are low because they still have leukemia and it just takes a long time for, for these lower intensity therapies to work. With a combination though, we're seeing responses on average within one cycle. And so kind of one of the most important things for, um, 
for using this combination is to make sure to do an, a bone marrow at the end of the first cycle to see if your patient's already in a remission, which there's a good chance they already are. If they are, then you kind of hold therapy for a week or two for the counts to fully recover, for their bone marrow to you know, fully heal, and then you start the next cycle. Um, and that's been kind of the most important intervention that helps patients tolerate this really well. And so um, that really is kind of the, the very brief overview of, of this uh, clinical trial, which really is kind of a transformative change in our standard of care, showing that you know adding this oral uh, therapy, venetoclax 2, azacitidine, really improves not only responses, but also transfusion independence, time to remission, and most importantly, the survival of our patients.